Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Great Men Taking Over the World. I'm Ren, and today I'm going to be talking about the follow-up to the Hack and Slash Gorefest, the game that a lot of people refer to as Bloodborne on the PS1. Today, I'm talking about Nightmare Creatures 2. <laughs> While not the greatest game ever made by any stretch, I did enjoy the first Nightmare Creatures for what it was. The dark, creepy atmosphere, the ghoulish monsters, and of course the good old blood and gore made for a fun time, especially back in the late 90s playing it on the original PlayStation. The game did have some serious drawbacks though, mostly in the awkward controls and repetitive gameplay. Still, the game did make an impression on me as a kid, and even now I do appreciate it. Hell, you can even say that Nightmare Creatures is essentially the spiritual predecessor to Blood the highly regarded Souls-like game on the PlayStation 4. So Nightmare Creatures was definitely unique at the time. Check out my full review of the game if you haven't already. There's a link in the description and pinned comment down below. So after enjoying the first game back in the day, around the year 2000, I heard that a sequel was coming out. I definitely wanted to try it out, so I went to rent the game and I remember seeing the cover. It had a weird looking mummy dude on it who ends up being the main character you play as. I don't remember too much from my experience with it besides the fact that this game had finishing moves, different types of fatalities based on the different enemies you fight and that the mummy guy had an axe as his main weapon. I also remember that this time around the game had emphasis on a heavy metal vibe, at least during the cutscenes where some wild ass guitar riffs would be jamming out as the main character runs around and chops up some monsters and stuff. Rob Zombie was actually responsible for the music during those cutscenes and it gets you in a head banging mood for sure. <laughs> I also remember bringing this game while I rented it to my friend Jared's house and his dad wasn't too pleased with the violence displayed in it. I mean we were like 12 at the time, which was funny to me because video game violence wasn't a big deal in my house. I was already playing Resident Evil, Tenchu Stealth Assassins, Metal Gear Solid, and all that nice bloody stuff. I also remember the disc being scratched up and the game would freeze a lot so I wasn't able to get very far. I can't remember if I ended up taking it back to the rental store or if I just replayed the same area over and over. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much my extent with Nightmare Creatures 2. I've never touched the game since then and wasn't particularly interested in revisiting it for a long time, up until recently when I modded my PlayStation Classic and figured I'd give this game a fair shot. Hell, maybe even review it. So here we are. Does Nightmare Creatures 2 make a nice clean cut? Or is it a messy hack job in desperate need of a lobotomy? Let's chop right in and find out. Crowley, the mad occult scientist from the first game, is back, making more nightmare creatures than ever before, and they are once again taking over the streets of London. You play as this Marilyn Manson mummy looking dude named Herbert Wallace, who was apparently a patient at Crowley's genetic hospital, which explains his bandages and why he's sometimes all skittish, but also seems pissed off and ready to hack and slash some ghouls with his trusty axe. Before he was captured by Crowley, Wallace was part of a secret monster hunter group called The Circle. Besides him, only one in this group survived, a woman named Rachel. Wallace escapes his padded cell in search for Rachel with which whom he teams up with as they hunt for Crowley to stop him in his devious plans. That's essentially what you're doing story-wise throughout the game. You're going from area to area in Crowley's footsteps finding clues to his next whereabouts. It's not very interesting because there's not much to it. They mention Ignatius, the guy character from the first game briefly, and the fact that he was the founder of the circle. So the story isn't the strongest suit of this game. It just seemed like they focused more on the in-between level cutscenes as an excuse to show Wallace running around, chopping up and blowing monsters apart to make the most of the Rob Zombie crossover, honestly. The gameplay is essentially the same as the first game. You hack and slash your way through a bunch of zombies and monsters while you explore various dark and creepy levels throughout London and Paris. You mostly just either have to clear out rooms of baddies or find a key for a door to progress, and sometimes there's a boss at the end of the level. Pretty standard fare. Since you'll be fighting most of the time, let's discuss that first. Marilyn Mummy, I mean Wallace, is armed with only an axe as his primary weapon. When you encounter bad guys, you go into a combat mode and lock onto an enemy, usually whoever is closest. This feels very similar to the first game where you kind of sidestep and hop around like a boxing match. Luckily, the other guys are honorable and just watch and wait their turn and don't attack you while you're engaged with whoever you are locked onto. 
you have a couple buttons to do a few different axe attacks in which you can chain them together into combos. I recommend spamming these combos, it's usually the best way to plow through these freaks, otherwise they'll interrupt your basic attacks and you can end up taking some serious damage. You can also do a flying knee attack on their asses. Just like the first game, it's cool that when you do combos, that you can hack off your opponent's limbs and stuff, and they'll still be trying to fight you even when they're armless and headless, it's pretty silly. Like geez, these dudes do not give up. You mostly just want to judge your distance and wait for an opening, then spam the fuck out of your combos to drain their health until you see the word fatality in the upper right corner to finish them off, which you can trigger by pressing both attacks simultaneously. Finish him. Wallace wins. Flawless victory. Fatality. The fatalities are new to this game and are one of the main draws. They're pretty cool, satisfying, and vary to most monsters, so it's not like the exact same one over and over, although some are definitely more awesome and gruesome than others, like the standard zombie one where he beheads him and then continues to chop up the rest of his body as blood splatters all over the walls. It's pretty awesome. Or the one where you climb up on this spider creature and jump off while blowing its head off with your gun. Pretty badass, right? Then there are other ones where he just kicks them or slams their heads into the ground, which don't look quite as cool. I wish you could chop up the big Hulk dude as a finisher, but all he does is freaking break his neck with his axe handle. Oh well, at least there's some variety to these fatalities, and either way, you're still gonna be chopping up a lot of dudes throughout this game, that's for sure. You'll go up against various looking freaks of nature that want to slap you around, bite you, or just give you a nice stabby stab in the old gutty whats. A lot are pretty straightforward, and like I said, you can just spam combos like on the basic zombies, or the creepy hags with their tits hanging out. Hot stuff, am I right? Others might block you and you'll have to wait for an opening. Like when you fight this big angry gorilla monster taking a shower. He seems pissed because he ain't got no damn hot water, and he's gonna take it out on you. Don't spam combos if he blocks, because he'll grab and lay the smack down on your ass like it's a goddamn wrestling match or something. Just back off and poke at him until he does his stupid roar, and then run in and go ham on his ass. Then there's these creepy, skinny, naked knife wielding dudes with some pube action going on down there. What the hell? They like to stand around and slurp their knives for some reason, like the weirdos they are. Yeah, it's really hard to spam combos on them. They'll block and slap you, and if you're too close, they'll grab you and stab you like you're a straight-up noob. The best strategy I had against them to preserve your health, besides using an item that will kill them instantly, is to do a tiger knee attack, back off for a second or two to give his AI time to reset, since they usually wait for you to come to them anyway, then rinse and repeat. Tiger! 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 Perfect. Yeah, it can get old fast, which brings me to this game's main issue, the repetition. Although there is some variety with monsters and fatalities, like the first game the combat gets old after a little while, there just isn't enough to keep it fresh and interesting. You don't get new moves or weapons besides the one use items. When you come across enemies you can't run away or run past them, you're literally locked into every fight. There are even invisible walls that create a ring around you guys when you get into fight proximity, and sometimes you don't even know where those walls start and stop, so you can get screwed because of that annoying bullshit. Like here when I enter the fight, an invisible wall closed in directly behind me and I get trapped and I can't really move backwards. Total bullshit! To add on top of that, sometimes when you know you're close enough to an enemy, the game won't trigger Wallace's fighting stance, so you'll get hit by a monster and have to wait for the game to recognize that you should be in combat mode and let you fight back. Because even if you swing your axe, it won't do shit because the game still thinks you're in exploration mode, not fighting mode. This didn't happen too often and it didn't last long when it did, but it was still very annoying and made the game feel clunky and somewhat broken. I guess that's kind of a good way to describe the fighting gameplay mechanics, clunky and repetitive. I really wish they improved this aspect from the first game, but uh, to no avail, unfortunately. The game's controls are mostly ass, particularly in the fights. I really hate how when you do combos, the last hit misses a lot of the time, which can put you in danger. It's like, what is the point of a three-hit combo if the last one misses so often for seemingly no reason? What's the point of a lock on then? I get that this is an early 3D game, and controls in general just weren't the greatest back then, so I gotta give it somewhat of a pass, but it's particularly rough in both of these games. Besides fighting monsters endlessly, the other main gameplay aspect is exploration. You'll traverse linear areas looking for keys, flipping switches, kicking doors, with attitude of course, finding explosives to blow up obstructions, climbing ladders, and a little bit of platforming. 
I get a sense of Resident Evil here a bit, particularly in some areas like when you're in this house in the second level. There's a grandfather clock, you gotta find keys and push some shelves to open up hidden passages. It also feels like Tomb Raider while you're exploring, you know, climbing ledges, platforming, and particularly the swimming, which straight up made me think I was playing as Lara Croft for a minute. <coughs> You'll also find boxes that contain items like health packs or various offensive items like gun ammo. Some of these items are pretty awesome like these flies you let out to swarm your enemy and they'll explode into a chunky bloody mess. Or the super gun which does the same. These are my favorites. The others are useful too like the fire or ice attack but killing them doesn't look as cool and satisfying. None of these beat the awesome saw blades from the first game which unfortunately aren't present here. I hate when you break boxes, you're almost always forced to pick up what's inside. So if you don't want health, cause you know, it's full and you want to save it for later, sometimes you're screwed and end up wasting it. The levels feel kinda long with some going over 20 or 30 minutes. There are save checkpoints scattered throughout the levels though. They don't restore your health when you get to them and save, but if you quit the game or die and have to reload your save, your health will be restored. It's weird. Whatever though. <laughs> the exploration can be fun here and there. You know, finding hidden nooks and crannies leading to some items, but it can get pretty boring as well since the level aren't designed in particularly interesting ways. They're usually pretty straightforward. You just have to look around thoroughly to make sure you're not missing anything to progress. So, you don't get stuck very often. There were a few times that were kind of bullshit in terms of figuring out where to go next, like in the castle. I couldn't figure out how to get the last piece to operate the bridge. This was a big area too, so I was going back and forth all over the place trying to find the last part. I had to look it up online, and apparently you push this random block to find a secret area, even though the block didn't stand out at all compared to the shelves that you push in other areas. I mean, how was I supposed to guess that? It felt really random, out of place, and cheap. This game isn't super fun to begin with, so dealing with this shit pissed me off. Luckily, this type of thing only happened once or twice in the game. Some levels have bosses at the end. They're generally pretty meh, and sometimes I couldn't even tell if I was fighting a boss or not. Like here at the end of the tunnel I ran into this weird guy hanging from the ceiling. He slapped me around a few times, uh, but I ended up killing him pretty easily. Then the level ends. I'm like, uh, okay then. <laughs> I know I've been ragging on this game quite a bit, but I can't help it, sometimes it's just not fun. But a huge redeeming aspect that did help keep me engaged is the incredibly rich, dark, spine chilling atmosphere. I'm an atmosphere horror and I love it in this game. It is fantastic and twisted as all hell. These cool scary vibes make exploration and the game in general more enjoyable. It made me want to see what's around the corner or what the next level will look and feel like. You'll be going through an abandoned asylum with dim lit creepy corridors leading to the unknown desolate stormy streets, unsettling houses, imagining that people might have actually lived here not long ago, bone chillingly cold snowy avenues and rooftops with vistas of the dark city below, a rundown museum, a derelict movie theater, your typical cemetery and sewer level, catacombs, a large medieval castle, and hell, you even scaled the Eiffel Tower in Paris. The graphics and dark style of the game really help to blend everything into a cohesive look and feel. The areas, while not super detailed, look pretty good, especially considering it's a PS1 game. It's believable and makes it feel immersive. Like for some random reason, I was impressed by the cool effect on these curtains blowing in the wind. Character models and their designs look good. Wallace is pretty detailed with all the bandages he has, and I appreciate small details and animation of said bandages, swaying as you run around. Like the first game, monster designs here are good, nice and creepy. You can't talk about the atmosphere in this game without mentioning the sound effects and music, which are freaking awesome. There are great ghoulish and blood curdling sounds from the monsters, groaning, screeching, roaring. Or the sounds of the crazy zombie dude laughing and revving his chainsaw in the distance. Mommy, I'm scared. Sometimes sounds kind of goofy too though, especially the regular zombies. When you hit them, sounds like you're beating up an old man or something. Or like, what about here? This guy sounds like freaking Arnold Schwarzenegger. What the hell? Or you'll find one in an electric chair crying. It's creepy sounding, but also kind of silly too. <laughs> Or what the hell is this? Some synchronized zombie burping? I like the sound of breaking glass. It's pretty cool. The background ambience is great too. Water dripping in a dark corner somewhere nearby. 
the rain and thunder outside during a storm, the frigid wind howling through the streets. It's good. The music is fantastic. Sometimes it's hard to tell the level music apart as they can sound pretty similar, but either way they really set the haunting tone. It's a dark, ambient, minimalistic style done by the same guy who did the first game, Frederick Mote. A lot of times it's just a low droning, industrial, or static sound, or some low bass notes. Sometimes there's a sparse melody thrown in here and there, but generally it's just super dark, sinister, and makes you uneasy. It's kind of in the background grating on you, slowly driving you to madness, but in a good way. I like the Paris level as it has a nice, slow, creepy melody building up as you explore the rainy streets. I really enjoy the museum level music, with that lonely, ghostly sound to it. Ooh, yeah. All this music blended with the other sound effects and monsters really make a brilliantly evil atmosphere. And of course, it's almost a complete contrast to the slow droning, creepy atmospheric soundscape. The cutscenes that happen in between the levels are raw and in your face motherfucking metal. I'm not sure if all of them are Rob Zombie or just the intro and credits where he does vocals, but either way they showcase and complement the crazy action sequences, plus they are just fun and get you headbanging. Like this badass heavy metal tune right before you head to the cemetery. Hell yeah, baby! <laughs> So I'm gonna give Nightmare Creatures 2 a 6 out of 10. It's a decent game. The idea of it is really cool and it does some things quite well, but it just needed maybe a bit more depth, variety, and overall polish to be a good game. Like I said about the first Nightmare Creatures, the gameplay loop here in the sequel is also pretty damn repetitive and can get old fast. The game oscillates between somewhat fun and monotonous boringness. The long levels don't help the sense of tedium. Unfortunately, the controls are still pretty clunky here. Maybe a little bit better than the original? The monsters, gore, and rich atmosphere is what carries the game in my opinion. The sound effects and dark ambient soundtrack are really good and creepy. This game has a more badass style this time, as Wallace doesn't fuck around and will chop the hell out of monsters left and right. And of course, the Rob Zombie heavy metal cutscenes really add to that badassery, giving this sequel an identity of its own. It's not a super difficult game, but it's also not easy. There are a few random difficulty spikes here and there. Marilyn Mummy Boy Wallace is a decent character. He has monologues in between levels, and his voice doesn't quite match his appearance. He sounds like a classy Brit, reminds me more of the Prince of Persia rather than some dude that was just experimented on and turned into a mental patient. But I could lament no longer. She needed me. My nightmare was just about to begin. Guess you can't judge a book by its cover. The story is almost non-existent. It's just Wallace following in the footsteps of Rachel or Crowley. It's... who cares? <laughs> Unlike the first game where you can play as Ignatius or Nadia, here you can only play as Wallace, so there's basically no replay value. Cheats aren't as good as the first game either, like you can't play as the monsters. It sucks there's no awesome saw blades from the first game, I miss those, and my beloved werewolves that go wow, wow, wow. they're not here either. Here are some spoilers in regards to the ending that I have to mention. The ending sucks balls completely. There's no epic closure. You don't even fight a boss. You just plant some bombs by this big tentacle monster and that's it. Even though the ascent to the top of the Eiffel Tower felt cool and like something epic was building up, but no, just blow it up, fall down, find Rachel in some rubble, and that's it. You don't face Crowley at all, and Wallace just says that he won't stop chasing Crowley. What the fuck? Are you serious? That's Rachel it? Wow. Lame. Well, it looks like Crowley is still on the Prowley after all. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of surprised I even finished the game. I really enjoyed it for the first few hours. I was immersed and wanted to keep playing. But then after those few hours, it kind of turned into a bit of a boring slog, and I had to force myself to play it for the sake of the review. I do not recommend buying it, unless you're okay with knowing what you're getting into. I'd say emulate it instead if you are curious. If you want a more modern take, play Bloodborne instead. That game hits the same style and creepy notes, but the variety in combat is fantastic. I mean, I know they're pretty different games, and Bloodborne is like 
15 years later, but I mean, of course, if you wanted to play something retro that's similar to Bloodborne, go ahead and try this. To be fair, we might not even have Bloodborne if it weren't for the Nightmare Creatures games. So I do appreciate them for what they are, a product of their time, really. This sequel is better than the original in terms of graphics and controls, but the first game ends up being more original and iconic in my opinion. I prefer the first game a bit more, but I'm sure nostalgia has to do with that too. Actually, I just played a little bit of the first game here to compare it to the sequel. The first game plays much faster in general, which does make it feel a bit more janky and controlled because it loses precision in its speed. But still, you are flying throughout the levels, which feels pretty refreshing compared to the super slow movements of Wallace. The second game feels maybe a bit more tighter in controls because of the slower movements, but the first game is just more fast paced and fun. Like you can go from fight to fight pretty quickly, it's cool. There seem to be more combos you can do and you can fight multiple enemies at once since there is no hard lock on like the sequel. The second game feels more claustrophobic in the environments as well, maybe on purpose because of the whole mental insanity theme of Wallace. There are lots of indoor areas, narrow rooms and hallways which can get old. I guess the reason I thought the boss fights in Nightmare Creatures 2 kinda sucked was because of the lack of boss music. It would just play the atmospheric music continuing from the level, making it feel like a fight that was indistinguishable from the others. While the first game, the bosses had their own stage and badass heavy metal music playing to amp up the feel of the fight. You know, making it epic. It's a shame the second game doesn't do this. You think it would because of all the hype from the Rob Zombie Association. What happened here? Overall, the first game just feels more fun to play, honestly. Anyway, it would be cool if they brought the series back and gave it a proper respectable upgrade, either through a nostalgic remake of the first game or a brand new reboot or something. Hopefully, at some point in the future, if they make a new game, we can finally stop Crowley and put an end to the nightmare once and for all. So guys, thanks for joining me on another episode where I took a look at Nightmare Creatures 2 for the PS1. Let me know what you think of this game and the video in general in the comments below. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. It really helps other people find it and I'd greatly appreciate that. Also be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't already so that way you can stay up to date with all our latest videos. Check out the Nightmare Creatures 1 review because there's some crazy stuff you don't want to miss. Anyways, until the next episode, guys, sleep tight and don't let the nightmare creatures bite. <laughs>